Person for fossil cures. If you can pull up my slides, I just had a few. So we're going to go to the skip over the next one and go to the next one. So keep going. Keep going. All right. So I wanted to talk about how, you know, I think research integrity isn't just about avoiding conflicts. It's really about managing, you know, the prospect of a conflict. So it's about being transparent. How can you stay focused? Sharing what you can, when you can, and remembering who you're working for. So the voice that I'm adding to this discussion, I had many hats that I was being asked to represent. I think it was the public consumer and the advocate role, and I put on my Facebook page, I feel labeled. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I know Sharon was interested in making sure that uh, we're talking about the patient voice in this conversation, which I, I would also argue isn't a um, pure, pristine voice because they have a very specific drive, which is faster treatments and cures or interventions that the medical system has to deploy. And I'm sitting next to a neurosurgeon, so he said he's, he's not in charge of faster cures, but the fastest cure. So, um, you know, patients care about the system in terms of how it's working for them. And we break the world down into you're either currently a patient and you know it, or you're going to be a patient. So people that I interact with, such as my neighbor across the street who I chatted with this morning, she is dealing with her breast cancer diagnosis, and she's just gone through the second of her 12 rounds of chemotherapy. And I was saying that I'm using her as a data point in my head as I do these kinds of talks, because this is a standard of care that you know, we think is pretty darn good out there in the medical world. But if you're the mother of two kids and you were you know, coming along pretty well, and all of a sudden you had this breast cancer diagnosis, and now you have to take a treatment that basically puts you on the couch for three or four days per cycle, for the foreseeable future, you know, till the end of the year. Um, I'm not sure you think that's good enough. So getting back to this topic of conflict of interest, patients have a very different view of what is a conflict and look at it more as a confluence of interest. Um, so this report that you see up here, you can find on our website at fastercures.org. We went and interviewed 20 of the leading venture philanthropy organizations. These are groups that are very singularly focused on putting themselves out of business, and they will you know, basically go work with whoever they need to to get that done. So this is a, a growing force, not necessarily in terms of the revenue that they're bringing to the table, but the mindset, which is very much, you know, how do we get the job done? So you know, we've talked a little bit today about uh, you know, an industry taint and how do we you know, spread some sunshine and you know, are we under the influence? Um, you know, these folks want to be under the influence because they want to get the job done. If you go to the next slide, there's a piece of our website called Train Central Station. This is a, an open source repository of you know, best practices from these organizations. So we've characterized them. You can go in. There's a different fact sheet per organization that will show you who they're collaborating with and, and what are the terms of those collaborations, because these groups are pretty transparent about that, too. Um, so I would encourage you to take a look at these models, because I think that they have a singular focus uh, of how can they do collaboration and make sure that the patients win. Now, if we go back to, <clears throat> excuse me, two slides, I want to focus for a minute on a report that we did looking at unlocking intellectual property. <clears throat> we gathered together a, a pretty diverse group of folks to come together to look at uh, this issue of responsible negotiation. And we heard from Todd, um, you know, sort of the, the Autumn University perspective. These organizations, you know, many of them have various stages of research. Some of them understand the origin of their disease pretty darn well and have been collaborating for a long time with academia and increasingly with industry. Other groups are just getting going. They don't know the mechanism of disease, so they're going to have to work with all these parties. These principles we put together for that specific purpose. If you can learn from others and, you know, mistakes and good things, then let's do it. We broke it down into a series of different uh, sort of bite-sized pieces, um, you know, kind of know when to hold them, know when to fold them, you know, let's not hold on to everything if it's really unnecessary, uh, you know, understanding who you're trying to negotiate with and not asking for things that they're never going to accept. So there's a variety of things in there that I would encourage you to take a look at. Um, but I just think that if we can keep this laser-sharp focus on how do we create a confluence of interests and not throw 
uh, the baby out with the bathwater, and I know that was discussed very early on this morning in terms of, you know, there's always going to be, you know, players that need to be monitored, and I think we've learned about all the systems in place to protect us against that. But in the process, I think that we need to be sure we're not protecting ourselves at the expense of accelerated delivery, um, both because patients are waiting, like my neighbor across the street, uh, and many of the people represented by these venture philanthropy groups, but also the physicians who treat them and really want to treat them and don't want to be constantly saying, gee, I don't have much to offer you. The universities who are doing all sorts of the discovery work from beginning, you know, middle to end, the NIH that's funding it, the FDA that's regulating it, and the payer system uh, that increasingly is taking a strong interest in trying to understand this world. And I think that that's a whole piece of this, you know, there's going to be a whole other player in this confluence of interest that is going to be asking tough questions about what works, what doesn't, what's value, what's not. So I've thrown a lot of different ideas out at you, and uh, we can pursue some of them during the discussion. Thanks very much. Next we have Henry Brem from Johns Hopkins.